G'day legends, absolutely stoked to be sharing a new Audioscape and Kybe Audio collaboration on a new plugin based on Audioscape's latest release, the MK609 Stereo Diode Compressor. This is based off of the famous 33609 compressor, which many of us will be familiar with. Now, when I think of this style of compression being a diode compressor, I think of character. And that's what this compressor imparts upon a sound. You can really hear the compression that's being added and the color and the flavor that it brings to any sound that you apply it to. And if after you watch this demo, you wanna grab a copy of this plugin for yourself, there will be a link in the description below. So enough chit chat, let's dive into the MK609. So just quickly, here's a setting that I've dialed in on the drum bus, and then we'll talk about it after we've had a quick listen to it. Okay, so you can hear it adds a lot of energy and a lot of liveliness to the drums. And you can hear the compression working. It's not transparent, it's not trying to hide, but it is adding a really cool sound to it. So let's talk about what we've got here in this plugin. On the left-hand side, we've got the limiter section. Basically, you can pull the threshold down, get the limiter working, and then you've got the release times here. You can go from something kind of aggressive with a 50 millisecond release all the way up to 600 milliseconds and then you go into auto and auto two. So the auto settings are a bit more glued sounding, a bit more natural, they're not as aggressive and pumpy sounding. We've got the limiter on and off. So then here we've got our attack times. We've got fast, slow, and then super fast. So then over here is our compression section. We've got our thresholds. Then we've got our recovery times, which is our release time. We've got 100 milliseconds, 400, 800, 1500 and then we've got auto one and auto two. So then up the top here, we've got the compressor attack time. Now it's really quite hard to see, it's really small writing, but if you click on it, it does pop up the word above it. So you can see which setting you're on. And then we've got our makeup gain and our ratio. And then up here, we've got a sidechain filter. And then we've got our overall bypass switch for both the limiter and the compressor. And then up the top, we've got all the little bells and whistles that you would expect with a Kyb Audio plugin. So we've got an input trim and an output trim. We also have a mix knob and you see I had it at 75, 76%. That just sort of gave me the sweet spot of what I wanted to hear. We've got oversampling and I've got it on times four at the moment, but it goes all the way up to 16 times. And then we can link left and right. You can run it in stereo or you can run it in mid side, which is awesome. And there's also total harmonic distortion. So you can add a little bit of saturation to it as well as there's a width knob if you just wanna add a little bit of extra width. Over here, we can bypass the whole plugin just by toggling this switch. Pretty much everything you need to know. Let's play these sounds a little bit more. So the drum sound I had there was kind of an aggressive drum sound, right? Sounds cool, but it is aggressive. So what if we put our settings on auto two for our release times? And let's just bring the ratio back to maybe like three to one. Let's have a listen to what we get out of that. That sounds really nice. It's just grabbing onto the drums in a really pleasing way. It's not pumping it's doing that gluey sound, which is what you'd expect from an auto release. Now let's turn the compressor off and have a listen to what the limiter sounds like when we really work this thing. So pretty cool, you can hear it can be really smashy, really pumpy, or it can be really glued sounding as well. It can be really grabby and hold on to the transients. So there's a really wide range of tones that you can pull out of this compressor. And so what I was doing before was having a fairly fast release time at about 100 milliseconds. I felt like 50 milliseconds was just a bit too pumpy. And then I was using that fast attack time and I was just getting it so it was working a little bit. So have a look at the meters over here and we'll just get it just kind of tickling when the snare is hitting. So 
just like that, getting the limiter to kind of tame the heavier peaks of the drums, and then we're gonna glue it a little bit more with the compression side. So then all we're doing over here, let's put our compressor back on. Maybe we'll go over four to one ratio this time. And let's go over slow attack, just to let the transient through a little bit more. And then let's use a fairly fast release time, maybe 100 milliseconds again. Let's pull this threshold down until it really starts to glue these drums together. That sounds awesome. It almost added a level of like transient designing to it because you could hear the kick and the snare were just way punchier. And I'd put that down to that slower attack on the compressor, just letting those peaks through and then clamping down just gives it a really nice sound. Now let's try it out on parallel compression on drums because this is always a great place to just really test the compressor out. So now I've got the MK609 on my crush bus. So this is where I will send all of the kicks, the snares, like kicks and snare samples, toms, um, a little bit of overheads and a little bit of room, but mostly just wanting like the shells of the kit. And then I will just compress them super hard. And depending what I'm looking for, I will go with a slow attack if I want to add more transient and punch. And if I'm looking to add more sustain to the drum sound, then I will go with fast attacks and fast release and just absolutely smash the sound up. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to absolutely smash this up. So let's use the super fast attack time on the limiter. Let's make sure our limiter is turned on fastest release time and then over on our compressor fastest release time let's put our attack onto the fastest as well and then on our ratio let's crank that up to six to one and then let's just smash this thing That's making the drums sound really beefy. Now we're just gonna turn this down and blend it in with our original drum mix and see what it adds. I love that. That adds so much energy to the drums. Okay, so it's great on drums. Let's try it out on the mix bus. Let's see if we can get a really nice glued sound on our mix bus. Okay, so I've got a little setting here for the mix bus and I've got the limiter on auto two and we're using the super fast attack and I just dialed this in so it was just reacting on those snare hits, the loudest transients in the mix. And then on our compressor side, we've got a two to one ratio. We're doing a 50 hertz sidechain filter. We've got a little bit of makeup gain and we've got the attack time on stock, which is kind of like a medium setting. And then our release time on auto two and then just pulled the threshold down till we're getting around four dBs of gain reduction. So it definitely gets that nice glued sound when you have the auto settings running like that. So let's try it with some faster release times on the compressor. Let's go with a 400 millisecond release time. Let's put our attack on slow. Let's just have no side chain filtering. We'll leave the limiter where it is. So it's definitely a little bit more pumpier with that. And it sounds pretty cool, it gives it some nice energy. So for me, the attack and the recovery times really change the character of this compressor in a pretty dramatic way. It can be 
kind of transparent on those really slow, like auto kind of release times and the slower attack times. But as soon as you start going a little bit faster with your attack times, a little bit faster with your release times, the character really starts to come out of this compressor. So let's try this out on one more thing, some electric guitars. I've got this little rhythm guitar layer here and let's see how the 609 sounds on it. Let's leave the limiter off and let's just play with the compressor on this. actually like that kind of slow attack time with the fast release on this. Sort of gets the, the transients of the guitar coming through, makes it a little bit more spankier sounding, and you can hear the compression kind of grabbing the tail of it. It sounds really cool. The slow attack and the fast release on this and the grab that it's doing is really adding some nice punch to the guitar sound. So my initial impression upon this compressor is really good. I like the way it sounds and I can easily find a couple of places to apply this in a mix. And like I said before, it's not the kind of compressor that you're gonna reach for when you want a clean sound. It's kind of the compressor that you reach for when you wanna add a bit of character and vibe to a sound. So it's great to have compressors like that that aren't just super squeaky clean. You know that when you apply it to a sound, it's gonna add something a little bit extra to it. So if you guys like the way that this compressor sounds and you wanna try it out for yourself, there's a link in the description below. Make sure you go check it out, do the trial. Make sure you like the plugin before you grab a copy. But by using that link in the description below, you do help support this channel as a small commission will come back from any sale made through that link. And that's just an awesome way of supporting the time that goes into making these kinds of videos. And if you wanna support this channel in another way, you can check out the link in the description below to my website. Go grab yourself a sample pack or a mixing course. Picking up any of those things really supports this channel. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and if you wanna stick around for another awesome video, check out this next one coming up. Yeah.